Blog Talk Radio. You're listening to Mathis Media Hub. Welcome to radio, magazine, videos, and much more. Oh, my. So sit back, relax, and be entertained. Call into the show at 347-327-9451 to speak with the host, Joanne Mathis. If you're interested in a professional voiceover or hosting a show on Mathis Media Hub, call 908-328-7014 and speak with Joanne. Now, on to the show, and let's meet today's guest. Well, hello, and welcome to Mathis Media Hub Radio. Boy, if I've got uh, someone exciting for you today. Uh, he has a new album out uh, called Heart on Fire, and I'm talking about Alex Gershman. Of uh, He's bass guitar and band leader of Sasha's Block, and... Um, they're very hot, so I'm going to bring him right on. Hello, Alex. How are you? Hi. How are you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great, great, great. You know, I listened to some of your tunes, uh, 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 Sasha's Block, and I was like, how did these guys get started? How did you get together? I mean, you're so versatile, uh, and uh, so tell me about it. You know, we really started uh two and a half years ago, and I had an idea of um, revitalizing and playing the jazz of the early 20th century, basically 1920s, 1930s. I really fell in love with this music early on. When I was really Uh young, I went to the concert, um, uh, one of the Preservation Hall concerts, and I saw this incredible musician playing uh, uh, absolutely fantastic music, and I really wanted to really capture that period. And I uh, um, got together with uh, some of the musicians, and it started really as a home project. We were doing some covers and and uh, started playing the clubs, but it really rapidly grew into um, a fairly large band with incredible musicians. And I started writing my own music, and uh, and it just took off. Wow. Now, where did you you start? I know you were born in Russia, right? Yes. Yes, I was born in Moscow. And uh, actually, the concert that I was saying that I went when I was really young, I think I was like 13 years old, my brother took me to that concert. Um, And it was in Russia, and it was really stunning at that time because it was really uh, a communistic Russia, and we haven't seen a lot of jazz uh, performances then. But it was absolutely mm-hmm. incredible, and uh, that really made a huge impression on me. Wow. And, you know, I'm looking at titles of your songs, and you're dead, like uh, Lonely Day in Paris. You're dedicated to Frank Sinatra. So you were like a Sinatra fan also. You know, the, the story behind this particular song is very interesting. When I lived in Russia, um, and it was pretty much sequestered. We weren't able to travel. Um, we weren't able to get outside the country at that time. And um, I had a friend of mine. We used to do this long walks and thinking in our heads how nice it would be to be in Paris. And everything we knew about Paris was just in books or, or stories or some people who went to Paris and came back and told us because we really didn't know anything except for some French movies or French literature. And we were kind of closing our eyes and imagining ourselves in Paris. So we had all these stories about us doing like walking Champs-Élysées or we walking in the rain in Paris. And so it created this really theme that I was thinking about for a long time to to capture in some ways in in art and in, in music. So when the time came and I wanted to write a Sinatra tune, um, I thought about Paris, and th- that's how this actually tune came about. Uh, wow. The Lonely Day in Paris, it's all about being in Paris and being in this romantic mm-hmm. environment. And, uh, you know, Frank Sinatra's mm-hmm. style felt uh, very, very good with that because, you know, about this, this really rich brass section and sort of a presence things. And Paris is a great right. new city, so that's how actually it, it came about. And then I actually called Frank Sinatra Jr., Frank's uh, son, uh-huh who is a friend of mine, uh-huh. and uh, I said to him, oh, nice. um, I just wrote that tune, and he listens, and oh, it's great, it's uh, fantastic, and that's how it's really uh, wow. made it <laughs> to the CD. Wow, that's that's fantastic. So tell me now, how did you decide on who was going to be in your band? 
I mean, you have a lot of versatile musicians and performers. And how did you get that together? Um, you know, it didn't happen overnight. Um, we started as a small uh, group of uh, four people, just with a rhythm section, and and um, some of them. You know, when we started the band. It was very important to me that musicians in the group will appreciate and like the style of music that we're playing. Because, as you know, jazz is, has a lot of different components. It can be a fusion, right. it can be smooth jazz, it can be uh, jazz rock. And, you know, mm-hmm. and modern musicians, in general, if you actually go to the clubs in LA, most of the clubs would play some sort of transitional jazz. It would be the fusion jazz or smooth jazz or mm-hmm. some more. Uh, hard uh, sort of uh, avant-garde sounds. When I started writing my music, it it really felt uh, very classical. You know, it's like a classic jazz of 20s and 30s with an absolutely traditional features in it. So I think in, it was in the beginning when we started the process, uh, it was a group of guys, and then some of them really didn't feel or didn't really understand what I was trying to do, and they were a little concerned that we are outdated in in a way that people will not ah. be interested in in the music of that era. They felt that mm-hmm. it's long gone, and so they they kind of left. And uh, it's interesting when we started playing in the clubs, the audience actually responded amazingly. Uh, we got so many people. Uh, the clubs were really filled. Uh, we almost Actually, we, all of our shows were sold out from the very beginning, surprising. Wow. And um, and people were coming to us saying, oh, my gosh, we've been waiting for somebody to come and play this music uh, because we missed it so much. And so it wow. kind of gave the directions of, of people that really liked to play this music at first. Right. So we had a group of musicians. We started to add more horns because we wanted to bring this brass sound to the band. So we started with a saxophone player. And so, uh-huh. so people changed, and then really a year and a half ago, a year when we started playing really big clubs, we, we, we got really fortunate. We got an amazing group of guys. Uh, the players that are playing in the band right now are really first-class uh, jazz musicians. We have uh, Alex Budman on clarinet and, and baritone saxophone. He's one of the top musicians in a big band. Eric, he has his own Hi. big band. Uh, we have Brandon Fields, who is, in my view, is one of the number one saxophone players in the world. Uh, we have mm. Kai Palmer, that had uh, had been on the CBS um, Letterman show for years and then played all Hi. over the world with different musicians. Mm. He's an incredible trumpet player. And then we have Bob McChesney on trombone, who is... Uh, considered to be one of the best trombone, jazz trombonists in the in the world. So that's wow. the caliber of musicians that are playing with us right now. One is better than the other. Uh, and we have Andy Lang come on piano, who is, I mean, we're basically talking about the top, top tier of, of musicians in the world. Right. Um, they're incredible. They, they they became part of the band. They, they, we, used uh-huh. to, we used to bring different musicians and, and you know, uh, but uh, almost for the last year, the the group didn't change. Uh, this is the same mm-hmm. eight guys that that playing together pretty much uh, as as a core group, and then singers a different story. What about your singers? <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's a that's a group on its own. Um, I mean, really? the the CD uh, that we're talking about, this Heart and Fire, we recorded right. in September, and I brought. Um, uh, an incredible uh, singer. Her name is Jean Monheit. Uh, Jean uh-huh. Monheit is a two Grammy nominated singer uh, from New York, and in my view, she's uh, one of the best jazz singers in the world. Uh, and of course, it's wow. a matter of taste, but but it's been accepted uh, for years that she's, uh, she's a very special singer. So she, I sent her the materials um, sometimes uh, last summer. And uh, uh-huh. sang her uh, some of my old CD because it's our third CD, and uh, she liked it and uh, she responded and decided to record with us and uh, we recorded the CD with her uh, in September. She uh-huh. recorded four songs, and uh, we just uh, we just had a great uh, great time together. She's one of the, wow. the uh, singers, and she had four songs recorded on the CD. Then we had Alvin Chia. Alvin is is uh-huh. the one of the founding members of a very famous group called Take Six. Oh, Take okay. Six is a ten Grammy uh, winner group. It's an acapella right. 
group uh-huh. that uh, actually just going on a tour with Manhattan Transfer. Um, uh-huh. Alvin uh, is, a, is a good friend of mine, and uh, we've been looking at different ways of collaborating. Uh, and um, he um, he really liked the material, and he recorded with us, especially one song right. on this CD. is called Black and Blue. Um, oh, I love that he, song. He, he he really, I thought, did an incredible job together with uh, Glynis Lafleur, the another singer that we have. Right. Um, and Alvin is is an icon in some ways. I mean, he's been doing this for mm-hmm. a long time, and he's been touring all over the world with Take Six. So that's uh, oh. that was him. And then we had Patrick Tuzolino, who is a has been around for a long time. He did a lot of touring and Vegas uh, gigs. Um, he's a great, great singer. And he's really in love with Sinatra, and he's the one who recorded the Sinatra tune, uh, the Lonely mm-hmm. Day in Paris, and I think he did a great job, too. I mean, he has a yeah. really a lot of charisma, a lot of character wow. in his voice. So that's him. <laughs> and then we have uh, our... Um, singer that really has been working with us for the last year. Her name is Nora uh-huh. Rothman. He's a young um, woman. Uh, she uh, she's an actress and a singer, and she has a oh. great depth, a great depth. And then she recorded two songs. So we had a quite a big group, as well as we had some fantastic back singers that recorded. So we had a total of um, seven singers. You have how many? Seven. <laughs> Seven. Okay. You know, I'm, th- I'm thinking to myself, wow, what an ensemble, what what a group uh, that that you have. You don't find a lot of uh, uh, groups, band ensembles that have such, uh, you know, star power. It's it's just incredible. I I think it's great. But you know, something else I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you was music your love when you were growing up or did you just happen into it uh you know i really loved uh music from from the beginning actually my mother told me uh that mm. i started singing first and i started talking uh, oh really i'm i'm not saying it's a good thing um but uh, but <laughs> apparently that was in my case and i really through my whole life um i've been uh you know, writing music and playing music in a different shapes and forms. I don't know if you know, but by profession, I'm a, I'm a doctor. I'm not a professional musician. I was, that's right, because I was reading, that that was going to be my next question, and I was saying to myself, now how did he transfer from being a doctor to music? How did you make, yeah. You know, it's a... Um, you know, I grew up in the family of doctors. All my parents, my parents, my brother was doctors, and it was very natural for me. And I really liked and loved what I do in medicine. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, but I always played. I always wrote music, and I always played in groups when I was in medical school and after the medical school. I never really did it in a serious way that I'm doing it right now. This is by far mm-hmm. probably the most uh, exciting time in my life in terms of dedication wow. to music. But you yeah. know, I noticed that a lot of doctors do different things. You know, it's, I think maybe because of the pressure that we have during work, and just uh, the uh, maybe just because we give up so much uh, of the energy to other people. I think that a lot of doctors mm-hmm. do have uh, some hobbies or do have some other outlets that they recharge in some ways. So when I started playing music and in my hospital, I work at Cedar sinai uh, every time we have lunch with a lot of physicians, everybody started to coming out of the closet and says, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm also playing in a little bit. Oh, I'm doing this. Too. Oh, yeah, I'm painting. I'm doing this. And so wow. everybody was like looking at me now in a way so, you know, I was able to, to bring my, my, you know, love to certain a way that I can actually share it with other people. And I think it wow. sort of opened up almost like a confession on their side to tell me about their wow. secret things, what they would love to do, what they would like try to achieve other, outside the medicine. So I found uh-huh. it it's very interesting and fascinating how how we don't recognize sometimes people's desire to, to do other things uh, rather than what they right. do in the daily daily things. So, so for me it was very natural because I played in the, in the medical school and then I played after, but 
in the in the states when I moved to the United States, I was very busy with research, and we, I was doing robotic surgery research and then operating all over oh. the world. So, I was really mm-hmm. first first ten years of my life here. I, I didn't have enough time to dedicate to music, but you know, recently I've had. Been, been having such a great time yeah. uh, combining both. Uh, I'm I'm still very active in medicine, but uh, all yeah. my uh, other other activities is all about music and writing and and you know uh, producing. And you know what I, I I like the fact that you said that uh, doctors uh, you know need an outlet because that makes sense. So I'm saying, oh yeah, okay. So this is your outlet, and this is the way to do it. So it's and plus the fact that it does flow into you have to be create creative in some aspect to be a doctor. Am I right? Um, I think so. Especially what I do, I do surgeries, and we do actually complicated uh, robotic surgery. So it, it, I think it's very it's very creative. Uh, and if you're not yeah. creative, if you don't find this quick solutions to problems of being really, you know aggressive in what you're doing. I mean, I don't think you can do good surgery. So it, it's a very creative job. Um, but right. also remember, medicine is in many ways one directional. So the most joy that we have is when the patients get better. That's really yeah. the, the ultimate sort of goal and the satisfaction of any surgeon when you have somebody who is sick and then make them feel better. Uh, other than that, it's a one directional street. It's the patients that have problems and the doctors who have to give comfort. There's very few uh, backwards uh, emotional things when patients uh, will give positive energy to the doctor. It's usually one directional street. So we have to have patients uh, and patients have to get better. And the re- 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 basically the the joy is just to see the patients get better. So a lot of doctors, I think, emotionally always looking for some positive reinforcements in terms of what they're doing. And I think any kind of art um, mm-hmm. possibly helps, I think. It d- definitely helps I me in many so. different ways to to feel uh, to feel positive things, et cetera. So um, that's that's one of the things to wait to think about, the, the doctoring, doctors getting into this sort of habits of having some, some other outlets yeah. for themselves. I well, think. I love it. I absolutely love it. We're going to uh, go for a commercial ba- break, and we'll be back with Alex Gershman. Well, I should say Dr. Alex Gershman. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Here is a well-documented fact. Humans spend approximately 33% of life in bed. That's a good reason to consider bringing your bed into the 21st century with Function All Linens. They'll change your bedtime forever. Designed for every kind of bedtime you can imagine, these fun and functional bed sheets have his and her side pockets that hold pretty much everything but the kitchen sink. The pockets allow you to have your cell phone, iPad, remotes, and anything else you need within your fingertips reach at all times. No more cluttered nightstands. No more fumbling around in the dark. Simply reach for your pocket. Experience the affordable comfort and pure luxury that only Function All Linens can offer. For more information or to order, visit functionall-linens.com or beddazzle.com. All right, we're back. You know, I was very uh, uh, here is a well very encouraged by what you were saying uh, uh, about being a doctor, being a musician, because that all goes to say that you can do anything you set your mind to in this life. I agree. And I, th- I, I think agree. you're proof of it, yeah. I love that. A lot of people, when I started playing in the band, could not really uh, believe that we will be able to achieve uh, the quality that we are of the music that we're playing right now because when I go on stage in the clubs, um, I, I, I'm a musician. You know, I don't... Um, relay myself to a doctor who's playing music. I'm really fully engaged in in music, and I want us and I want the band always to sound professionally fantastic, yes. captivating right. people, and and that's what I think we we've been able to accomplish in a fairly short period of time. We've been on stage what for like two years, but uh, yeah. 
uh, right now we did a series of concerts with Jane Monheit, and we released the CD. So we had four concerts at Vibra- two concerts at Vibrato, and four, two concerts at Catalina Bar and Grill, which are big, famous wow. clubs, and they were packed with people, uh, packed with people who heard about us, who came from different parts of town, and some of them came from out of town, and. The reaction and the response were amazing. People were saying things like they've never heard anything like this. This was the best show. And I'm not saying that that's what everybody, maybe some people did like it. I don't know. But my overall Aww. impression was just incredible uh, acceptance of the music. Everybody um, loved the songs. I mean, and of course, it was very encouraging for me. And it felt yeah. like we we're on the right track in terms of the reaching out to people and, and making them to sort of accept this music and liking it and uh so I was really, really pleased. And it's and it feels fantastic to be validated, doesn't it? I mean that must have been something, you know, the reaction that you got uh for something that you put your hard work into. I you know, I think that's really great. But you know, I wanna talk about Heart on Fire because that came out that album came out i believe march 17th was your debut for that album correct. yeah correct yes yeah, okay okay and uh so t- tell me a little bit more about it uh, about uh now it also you know, it, says here mm-hmm. that that this was a ballad uh, this ballad is about passionate love and life that is empty without somebody you care for so there's a little romance going on here alex mm-hmm. i like that it's true. Um, the whole album was basically designed to to bring some fresh uh, sound to uh, a very great jazz era um, when jazz really was very significant. And most of the songs, there's 11 songs on this album. Uh, most of the mm-hmm. songs are in that uh, era style of 1920s and 1930s with a big grandiose sound of uh, tuba and saxophones and banjo and great vocal arrangements. So I think that the good thing, the great thing about this album is that it's really, I think, tastefully done, in my view. Uh, And the songs are different from from very uh, Dixie, New Orleans-style breakfast, where Jane Monheit is really uh, sort of uh, bringing that style into the very forefront of the CD. And then the the song that you just mentioned, uh, the song that's Heart on Fire, which is actually I wrote uh, specifically having in mind Jane, because Jane is very famous for ballads. And Heart Ah. on Fire is the song about love. It's a song about life empty without love. Um, and, uh, And it's really about the deep, true feelings of finding somebody who really cares and who you really care to and uh, I think right. she did a fantastic job. I really this is one of my favorite songs in the, in the album actually. Um, I love that. I listen to it and I want everyone to listen to it now, uh Alex. So I'm I'm going to play the song and uh, okay. we'll talk about it when we come sure. on the other side of it. Hold on. Sure.
absolutely beautiful. Oh, absolutely. And so, I now you wrote this. Yes, I wrote all the songs on the, on the album. All the songs. Wow. All the songs. And what puts you in the mood to write something like that, Alex? I mean, it's, a, you know, a, a nice sound. It's a, Do you write according to mood? You know, uh, the lyrics of all the songs has some meaning for me in different shape and forms, and I always try to write about my feelings. Uh, Heart on Fire mm-hmm. was sort of my emotional condition and state at that time. Um, mm-hmm. I felt uh, talking about uh, love and and uh, feelings and uh, acceptance mm-hmm. and sharing. Um, and that's how it came out. Uh, um, all the songs have some form of, of belonging or thoughts that I have. Breakfast, for example, mm-hmm. is about about uh, enjoying life as we, you go through it and not to forget to enjoy every moment of it. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, anything is possible is about, you know, nobody should tell you what to do. You should basically be assertive and, and really believe in yourself. So every song has some sort of a message for me in terms of my perception of living, my perception of life and people. So uh, I, I try not to write songs just uh, about the blue skies. You know, I'm just trying to right. say something meaningful that really dear to me, whether other people share this with me or not, that's a different story. But every song on this album has some personal touch uh, on my end. And I also think that it has a personal touch to to people who listen to it, you know, because of it, it's for variety. It's not like one thing with one thread going through it. But people have different moods, you know, and um, different states of mind. And I'm sure each one of these songs touch that in some way. So you have a fantastic album going on here, Dr. Alex Gershman. I think uh, you are fantastic. I think Sasha's block uh is fantastic. I wish you all the best, not that you need it. Um, and uh, you're going to go a long, long way with this. So kudos to you. Thank you so much for the kind words that you're saying. Oh, absolutely. So if you go to Sasha.com, uh, that's your website. And, Correct. And uh, we can find you on Apple iTunes and of course, SoundCloud. Yes. Yeah, uh, so please get the album. It is absolutely wonderful. You could just sit with a glass of wine or with your sweetheart or whatever. Uh, you know, if you're in a jazzy mood, so it's got it's got a little bit of something for everybody. So there you go. Thank you, Alice Gershwin of Sasha Thank you Block. So much. Absolutely, and take care. Thank you, and take care. Thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. That does it for us for uh, Alice Gershwin of Sasha Block. Uh, as I said, go to SashaBlock.com and uh, check out the website. They're on Apple iTunes, their new album, uh, Heart of Fire, Sasha's Block, uh, is out. So please uh, get the album. You will certainly, certainly enjoy it. Thank you for listening to Mathis Media Hub Radio. Take care. <laughs>